Few buildings are quite as grand and impressive as churches. After all, their stained glass windows, marble finishings, and beautiful artwork make them a sight to behold. However, while most churches are relatively small, there are some churches that provide services to tens of thousands of people per week, with some even having more seats than some professional sports stadiums. So grab your hymn books and get ready for today's video on the top 15 biggest mega churches in the world. Number 15. Seville Cathedral for several years, Spain was controlled by Muslim conquerors, so when Spain was reconquered by the Catholics in the aptly named Reconquista, Seville was a prime target at Spanish attempts at re-Catholicization. After all, it was in this major city that a large mosque had been built, so the decision was made to tear it down and instead reconstruct a massive church. Built between 1401 and 1528, it's a Gothic masterpiece that features a total of 80 chapels a 104-meter bell tower known as La Geralda, and beautiful sculptures flourishing across its interior. Therefore, if you ever get the chance to visit Seville, this cathedral is a must-see. Number 14. Ulminster When it comes to Protestant churches, the largest one in the world is the Ulminster. Located in Ulm, Germany, it began its life as a Catholic church, as it served as one from its consecration in 1405 until the year 1531. This is because a citywide referendum in that year determined that most of the city's residents wanted to convert Ulm to Protestantism, causing the church's allegiance to change. However, this wasn't the only thing to change about the church, as due to its complicated design, it was constantly in a state of construction, only being completed in 1890. The end result was a church with a striking 162-meter tall sandstone tower and a Gothic style, and to date, it's easily one of the most impressive buildings in Germany. Number 13. Basilica of Our Lady of Lincoln Out of all the churches in Eastern Europe, the largest to date is the Basilica of Our Lady of Lincoln. Located in Lincoln, Stary, Poland, the impetus to first build it began after a soldier experienced a vision of Mother Mary, requesting that he find a miraculous image of her and display it for all to see. And this eventually led to a chapel being built with her image at its center. Over the years, this chapel saw an increasing number of pilgrims, and so in 1994, the decision was made to create a much larger church in its stead. Consecrated in 1999 and fully completed in 2004, the end result was a massive church with a large 98-meter-tall dome and 141-meter-tall tower, making it one of the most impressive religious buildings in the region. Number 12. Milan Cathedral when it comes to churches, few have had an exterior that is quite as ornate as the Milan Cathedral. It's more commonly known as the Duomo. Construction of it began all the way back in 1386. And while most of the more important architectural portions were completed in the 19th century, it wasn't until 1965 that the entire cathedral was completed. Now, the Milan Cathedral stands apart for being the largest church in Italy, since St. Peter's is part of the Vatican, and it has a stunning Gothic design that sets it apart from most other buildings in the city. Interestingly enough, while the exterior is white, bright, and very ornate, the inside is actually very dark, allowing you to be able to pray and reflect without getting distracted by all the paintings and statues. As such, while the Milan Cathedral may be grand, it's also well designed to serve its intended purpose. Number 11. Basilica of the Holy Trinity of all the churches on this list, the basilica that has perhaps the most modern-looking appearance is the Basilica of the Holy Trinity. Completed in 2007, it was built on the Sanctuary of Fatima, which stands apart due to it being the most important religious site in Portugal. It's because this is the area where the Virgin Mary reportedly visited three young children and performed miracles to a massive crowd of people back in 1917. And so, in the Virgin Mary's honor, a small basilica was built. However, the large number of pilgrims that would often visit overwhelmed the site's small capacity, so in 2004, construction began on a much larger church. Made in a circular shape with materials such as white stone brick and shiny wood, the church has a simple yet modern feel, while its capacity of 9,000 ensures that many people can visit it at once. Therefore, if you're looking to go on a pilgrimage, a trip to the Basilica of the Holy Trinity would be an excellent choice. Number 10. Liverpool Cathedral while most of the world's largest churches happen to be Roman Catholic, the world's largest Anglican cathedral is England's Liverpool Cathedral. You see, after Liverpool became a diocese in the 19th century, it was deemed necessary to build a grand church there. And so, in 1901, 22-year-old architect Gilbert Scott was given the reins to start the project. Now, due to him being a very meticulous man, he constantly changed the design, and at one point even started again from scratch. 
When compounded with the fact that the construction had to be put on pause during the World Wars, the entire process was very slow, and as a result upon Scott's death in 1960, the cathedral still wasn't finished. However, once a new architect got on the scene, things started to move a little quicker, and by 1978 the cathedral was finally completed. Notable thanks to its massive central bell tower, the Liverpool Cathedral sets itself apart by combining both Gothic revivalist and modern styles of architecture. And by all accounts, it is a beautiful building. As such, if you ever happen to be in Liverpool, you should definitely give this incredible church a visit. Number 9. Basilica of St. Paul Outside the Walls Out of all the churches on this list, the one that's arguably the most beautiful is the Basilica of St. Paul Outside the Walls. Located a fair distance outside of central Rome, the church has been around in some form or another since the 4th century, although due to a massive fire that happened in 1823, it wasn't until about 1929 that the basilica looked similar to how it does today. Now, at first glance, the most breathtaking thing about this church is its beautiful garden, as its lush green colors contrast beautifully with the white exterior marble. When you walk inside, perhaps the most eye-catching feature is the series of mosaic portraits of every single pope to have ever lived that adorn the horizontal columns that are located across the ceiling, with several spaces being left blank in order to accommodate any future popes. If that wasn't enough, the basilica also houses the tomb of who is believed to be St. Paul, making it a massive pilgrimage site. Yet, given the fact that this monstrously large structure is the approximate size of one and a half football fields, chances are that you won't feel at all claustrophobic while inside. Number 8. Yoido Full Gospel Church In terms of size, Asia's largest church is the one and only Yoido Full Gospel Church. While you've probably never heard of it before, it's the main church of the Assemblies of God religion, which is a strain of evangelicalism that began back in 1958 by pastors David Yonggi Cho and Choi Jasil. Now, the church originally began as a small service inside of Yonji Cho's home, but after a vigorous campaign of knocking on doors, providing spiritual and humanitarian help to the poor, and praying for the sick, the religion began to spread. While it initially relied on large tents to house parishioners, the amount of attendees soon surpassed the church's capacity, and this eventually led to the creation of a smaller church known as the Sode Mun Church in 1961 and Yoido Full Gospel Church on Yoido Island in South Korea in 1973. Built with the help of funds donated by the church's members, Yoido Full Gospel Church is absolutely massive, as it can fit about 7,500 parishioners and has an external surface area of about 44,000 square meters. And while the death of the pastor in 2021 marked a period of flux within the religion, Yoido Full Gospel appears to still be chugging along. Number 7. Cathedral of the Nativity of Christ while Roman Catholicism may be the most globally dispersed form of Christianity, in Africa, one of the most important subgroups is the Coptic Church. And of all the Coptic churches out there, the largest is the Cathedral of the Nativity of Christ. Located in the as of yet unnamed New Administrative Capital of Egypt, this cathedral is by far the newest on this list, as it was completed in 2019. Now, this church was built in a direct response to a terrorist attack on two Coptic churches, with the idea being that this cathedral would be built along with a new mosque in order to symbolize the possibility for coexistence and national unity. Designed using Noah's Ark as an inspiration, the church has many curved areas that look rather ship-like, while its pair of Coptic-style lighthouses contains bells that further advance the church's nautical theme. Since it is the primary church of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, the building also features other additions such as the main square, papal headquarters, reception hall, meeting room, parking garage, and administrative offices, while its capacity of 8,500 ensures lots of people can attend its services. So, while this may be a new church in a new city, I'm sure that it'll see increasingly large attendance numbers every single year. Number 6. Cathedral of St. John the Divine while most of the world's largest churches are located in the Old World, the world's largest New World church is fittingly located in the massive city of New York. While certainly overshadowed by the city's other impressive landmarks, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine is still an impressive structure, and it has a rather interesting history. You see, in 1887, Henry Codman Potter, who was the Bishop of New York's Episcopal Diocese, called for the creation of a new cathedral that could rival the Catholic-owned St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan. 
In 1889, construction of this new cathedral began in a Byzantine Romanesque style, although in 1909 the design shifted to a Gothic Revival style. Due to budget shortfalls, construction was very slow, and in 1941 the onset of World War II caused the construction to fully be put on hold, with construction not resuming until the 1980s. Yet a 2001 fire meant that much of the budget for the construction had to be diverted to a rebuild, and the end result was a cathedral that was simply never completed. Often called St. John the Unfinished, the church still lacks the southern transept and the towers that were called for in the original design. Yet in spite of this, the church is absolutely massive, coming in at a length of 183 meters, height of 54 meters, and surface area of about 11,000 square meters. Number 5. Bet Mahane Alem Bet Mahane Alem is the smallest of all the churches on this list, but it earns itself a spot due to the fact that it's one of the largest monolithic churches in the world. For those of you who don't know, a monolithic church is a church made of using one piece of stone. Because massive stones aren't all that easy to find, they are generally built into the sides of mountains. However, Bet Maharay Alem seems to be an exceptional example of this type of style, as it's not only massive, but it was carved using one freestanding piece of rock. Located in Lalebele, Ethiopia, it measures in at 33.5 meters in length, 23.5 meters in width, and 11 meters in height, and was likely carved from a massive volcanic rock sometime in the late 12th or early 13th century by King Lalebela. Likely built with the help of about 40,000 laborers, Bet Mahane Alem may actually be a rock copy of the St. Mary of Zion Church in Aksum, and it stands apart for being surrounded by 34 large columns, having three empty graves in one corner that are said to have been prepared symbolically for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and for being home to its astounding 7-kilogram gold Lalabella cross. So yeah, it's a safe bet to say that Bet Mahane Alem is a pretty cool structure. Number 4. Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady Aparecida When it comes to history, few churches have a backstory quite as interesting as that of the Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady Aparecida. You see, the story goes that in 1717, three Brazilian fishermen were attempting to catch a large amount of fish in the Paraiba River in order to supply a banquet. However, despite their prayers, they caught no fish, until one day one of the fishermen cast out his net and caught a statue of the Virgin Mary. From that point forward, the fisherman began catching tons of fish, and soon the fisherman that found the statue had it displayed in his home so pilgrims could pray in front of it. This led to him building a small chapel to house the statue, and over time the chapel grew larger and larger until, in 1955, it was decided that a massive basilica will be made to house it. Built in a Romanesque revival style and built in the form of a Greek cross where all sides of the cross are equal, the church's length of 188 meters, width of 183 meters, and height of 109 meters, and capacity to seat 30,000, makes it the largest church in South America. This is probably for the best, because millions of people visit it every year, with all coming to see the famous statue for which the church got its name. And while a robbery attempt in 1978 almost meant that the statue was lost to the public forever, today it stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of the structure. Number 3. Hagia Sophia While the Hagia Sophia stopped being a church all the way back in 1453, it still stands apart for being one of the most important religious buildings in human history. First built all the way back in the year 360, it's more or less amassed its present external features by 537, and over its history it has served various different uses. Its very first intended role was the main Christian cathedral of the Eastern Roman Empire, although given the fact that the Western Roman Empire had fallen, this essentially just meant that it was the main holy site of what is now known as the Greek Orthodox Church. It retained this title until the year 1453, when after a quick 55-day siege, Constantinople fell to the Ottomans. Once the Ottomans took over, they almost immediately converted the Hagia Sophia into a mosque, destroying or converting most of the Christian iconography, and therefore completely changing its function. It remained a mosque until 1935, when it became a museum under the secular Turkish President Ataturk, and it remained a museum until 2020. It was in this year that current Turkish President Erdogan's government reconverted the Hagia Sophia to a mosque, which drew a considerable amount of foreign criticism. Now, beyond its rich history, the Hagia Sophia is significant for a few different reasons. The first is because its sheer size is an absolute marvel of human engineering. After all, it comes in at 82 meters in length, 73 meters in width, and 55 meters tall, making it far larger than practically every other building in the city. 
Beyond its physical stats, the Hagia Sophia also stands apart due to its ornate architecture, as it used beautiful domes, large marble pillars, and intricate mosaics that are in many ways unique to the Hagia Sophia. When you further consider its role as a symbol of Byzantine power, it's not hard to see why the Hagia Sophia earned a spot on this list. Number 2. St. Peter's Basilica when it comes to churches, the one that stands apart from them all for being the world's largest is St. Peter's Basilica. Coming in at a length of 220 meters, width of 150 meters, and a height of 137 meters, the basilica is the largest in the world and sports a 60,000 person capacity. Now, the very first St. Peter's was built all the way back in 329 by the Emperor Constantine, who built it atop the burial place of St. Peter, who was the founder of the Catholic Church. As the Catholic Church grew in prominence, it began to attract large quantities of pilgrims, but by the mid-15th century, it was beginning to fall into disrepair. As a result, in 1506, Pope Julius II began the construction of the modern-day Vatican, with the finished building taking more than 120 years to build from start to finish. Unsurprisingly, this meant that the Vatican cycled through a number of different architects, and the end result is a basilica that is stylistically unlike anything else on Earth. Now, the plan of the original architect, Donato Bramante, included multiple domes and one tower on either side in what would amount to a Byzantine-inspired Greek cross church. However, once Bramante died, his replacement architect, Antonio da Sangallo, realized that Bramante's poles to hold up the dome weren't strong enough and made an entirely different plan. But it was really the next architect, who was none other than the immortal Michelangelo, that made the basilica what it looks like today. He decided to simplify the design by pushing the nave farther back and creating one large dome rather than multiple smaller ones, and the end result was a basilica of epic proportions. After all, the dome of the Vatican is a monstrous 42 meters in diameter, and it's 137 meters in height from the floor to the top. The structure is supported by unconventional twisted columns, while at each corner there are ornate sculptures that are absolutely stunning. If that wasn't enough, in order to ensure that the artwork of the basilica would last forever, it was made using micro-mosaics rather than paint, making it truly an immortal structure. And when you further consider that additional attached buildings such as the Vatican Museum, Sistine Chapel, and Apostolic Palace further complement St. Peter's already stunning features, it's not hard to see why millions of people visit the Vatican each and every year. Number 1. Basilica of Our Lady of Peace while St. Peter's Basilica has the largest interior surface area of any church on the planet, the church that has a larger overall surface area is in fact the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace. Considered to be the largest church in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records, the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace is a relatively new church, as it was completed in 1989. Now, the church was commissioned by Félix Houfet Boigny, who was the first president of the Ivory Coast, and the reasons behind its construction were a little bit odd. This is because he intended the church to be a symbol of his personal brand, as it was part of his larger plan to transform his relatively small hometown of Yamoussoukro into Ivory Coast's political and administrative capital, and the grandeur of the basilica is nothing short of incredible. Although not an exact replica, the design of the basilica is heavily influenced by the Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican, although its surface area of 30,000 square meters and large cross atop its dome makes it larger in both height and overall area. In terms of its capacity, it can fit a total of 18,000 parishioners, and is outfitted with beautiful Italian marble and French contemporary stained glass. Yet despite all its beauty, the basilica has proven to be a waste of money in more ways than one. On one hand, the basilica was prohibitively expensive and an insane $300 million. For reference, this was about double the Ivory Coast's national debt at the time. Given the fact that many people in the country didn't even have access to running water or adequate sanitation, this was seen as a frivolous waste of money. However, on the other hand, it also sees very little use. That's because despite being intended to be the world's greatest basilica, very few pilgrims come to visit it. And despite its large capacity, it only has a few hundred weekly parishioners. Instead, the most well-attended church in the city of Yomosukuro is actually the older and more established Cathedral of St. Augustine. And to date, the only time that the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace was filled to capacity was during the funeral of President Hufet Buani. And as a result, in a country where only 17% of people identify as Catholic, it's largely an unused relic. And in all honesty, it doesn't seem like this will change anytime soon. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, 
and get ready to binge.